boom, that's the cue. That's what's yeah. Up, you man. almost did a slap. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want you to know how important you are, Byron, Byron Rogers. Really? Okay, there's a UFC fight happening right now, and I've <laughs> opted in to do a podcast with Byron Rogers. That's oh, how important man. you are to the Action Junkie show. Last minute too. Last minute. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I brought back up this week, too. Okay, okay, I've got podcast okay. first. Is this your first podcast ever, yes. both of you? Yes, yes yeah. actually, this is my first podcast. Wow, okay, awesome. I like it. So we've got Emerson Spencer on my right. Uh, and I, I thought, George, there it is, all right. And then across from her is her sister, uh, Bentley Spencer. The older sister, yes. I should add. <laughs> Seniority. Just turned 18 a couple days ago. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. Outstanding. Uh, so you guys are from Dallas. Yes, yes, we are. Lone Star State. Was this your? This wasn't your first trip to Vegas, though, right? It was my first trip. It was her second. Trip. Yeah, this was my second time. Uh, we came back here, um, or we were here in December. So okay, this is yeah. And that was my first time. Though. I've known your. I should say I've known your mom for a very long time. Almost, almost coming up on ten years pretty soon. I've known their mom, and uh, she's. I'm going to nominate her for Mom of the Year because really? last night. Yep, I was on their <laughs> social media, and you know where these two were plus their mom last night, Byron? Plus their mom. You want to take up. a guess where they were? Uh, no way. No they were way. at <laughs> Thunder from Down Under. <laughs> wow. Mail uh, review show, review. if you will. Okay. Yes, they were reviewing mails. How did review. that go last night? It was night? very interesting. You both looked very happy in the post that I saw. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was very interesting. It was not what I expected. No? Not what good. were you expecting? A lot less worse than it was. Well, it was actually it was a lot of fun. It Lots was it was a lot of fun. They're not yeah. naked, but pretty no, no. close, They're right? Close like enough. a thong mm -hmm. and a. They're very close and to a, being naked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thong and yeah. a. Well, I don't know which whatever yeah. else. They ah, do. <laughs> less of whatever. Right. <laughs> Try not to get canceled here. This is a very <laughs> tricky show, Byron. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you got me into? <laughs> So yeah, so that was good. Now, did you meet any of the cast members after the show? Yes, we did. We did. Photos, we got, the whole nine yes, yards. Yes, we did we got take a some photo photos and we did get autographs. Did you? Yeah. Yes, did. All right. They sign all your <laughs> pictures. So after the show, they all stand outside mm -hmm. of the showroom. And you can talk and to them and take photos, sign, sign pictures. Hire yeah, them. That's pretty cool. Now <laughs> I, I had lunch with you guys yesterday, yes. uh, and we talked about your type. Was any of them your type? Over there in the show? Yes. Was your type represented? <laughs> yes. Actually. Can I say your type or no? Uh -huh. I don't have to. No, I don't mind. It's okay. The sure. Lenny Kravitz yes. type. Would they <laughs> yes. have the Lenny yeah. Kravitz type? Yes. Okay. Somewhat. Very yeah. good. So you got photos with the Lenny Kravitz, yeah. uh, <laughs> Lenny Kravitz <laughs> version, version of the Thunder. Yeah. Are they all from Australia? Yes, yes actually. Every single one of them are from Australia. They're all from Australia. You dig the accent? Yes. I mean, it's pretty cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I like it. There you go. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So the reason why I wanted to have you guys on uh, with Byron is uh, this is actually going to air uh, next week as part of our every year, every year. This will be the third year we do the Action Junkies 24-hour live stream. And uh, I'm on for 24 straight hours, but I do take like an hour dinner break and we usually run, like last year we just ran like old clips from the show, nice. kind of a thing for an hour or whatever. So I just thought since you were in town, we could take advantage and, uh, and insert this into next week's show, the 24-hour show. Nice. Uh, but I specifically wanted to have them on because this year we've added a charity, uh, Project for Humanity, and they raise money for a few different causes. But the one we're focused on next week is women that are uh, survivors of sex trafficking, sex crimes, awesome. domestic violence, et cetera, awesome. uh, which not that they are survivors of that. They've uh, not had any, luckily, uh, I'm assuming, uh, at least, you've not had any terrible things happen. Mm -hmm. But I thought it would be good because Byron is a you know security expert. He's a combat veteran. Um, and I know a lot of you want to, you know, both of you want to get into entertainment, and it's possible they might move to L.A. at some point. Who knows? They're in Dallas now. All right. But L.A. is a dangerous place, uh, Byron, for girls that look like this, right? Well, for, <laughs> for any, anybody, right? Yeah, these days it is. It's for anyone. I saw a video just yesterday of a guy that was pulling up at, like, a sandwich shop that, like, we've all been to. And he's driving like a blacked out Ferrari or something, and he just gets jumped broad. Daylight. I saw it. Oh, yeah. I probably saw it on your thing. Right? <laughs> yeah, he got jumped for his Rolex or yeah, something, right? Yeah, yeah. And LA's turning kind of into Gotham, you know. And 
I mean, I almost can't really blame some of the criminals when you're like walking around the Rodeo and you see all these people with all this stuff and you're right. just like, all I got to do is follow this like sheep home. Yeah. And just jump him in his driveway, take his stuff and leave. Yeah. Cops aren't going to do anything. Cops have said they're not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, literally. Uh, the they're law not. doesn't let you carry guns out there. Uh, so it's like, what's, what's the barrier to entry? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? So, um, yeah, it's it's gotten crazy out there. And But I mean, you know, for my industry, it's become um, great. Yeah. <laughs> because people are realizing they need to take their own security into their own hands one way or another. And either that's you hire it or you learn it. Um, and what I always like to talk about with regards to that is just learning how to protect yourself and your family isn't really all about the dojo and the range. It has so much to do with learning how to live a safer pattern of life. And, you know, not all of us like are as potent, um, a hundred and, you know, 230, 40 pound dude, you know, y'all are definitely not that, but if you learn how to live a safer pattern of life, you learn how to recognize things, you learn how to move through the world differently you just end up with a safer life. You yeah. Know? And that's kind of the soft skill stuff that I like to touch on as much as I can so people can uh, upgrade their PQ protection quotient. What's up? And even on social media, it's yeah. kind of where all of that begins now, right? I mean, like they post, uh, I would say you post a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Of, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, some of the one of the things, like, I wonder, like, since you've been here in Vegas, you probably d committed the cardinal sin that, ah. that Byron hates. He knows ah. what I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. You probably were posting on story last night while you were at the location, yeah. uh -huh. like in real time, right? Yeah. Like you were, you were, uh, you know, at Wynn or Encore, you know, shopping mall in the daytime yeah. or whatever. And you probably were making story posts of where you are at the exact time where you <laughs> yes. are, right? Oh, that yeah. is a no, no, guilty. right, guilty. Byron? Yeah. That is like how you get hit. Like, <laughs> So I got a call from a prospective client just this week on the exact same thing. They're on a vacation, nice, awesome, beautiful place where a lot of uh, high net worth folks go to vacation. So if you're a bad guy, what do you do? You just go ahead and hop on that hashtag. You watch that hashtag for somebody who lives close enough to you who's on vacation. Like, yeah, check it out. Wow. And then all of a sudden, boom, you can go and hit their house because they're on vacation right now, right? Like, so anytime I see somebody that I know and love posting like, I'm in Cancun, like, I'm like, stop, 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 <laughs> yeah. stop. Save those pictures, post them when you get back. I know it's inconvenient and like, so not cool. I and do, by the way. But it will save you a lot. Not you so don't cool. even do it. So no, it's no. not just a female thing. I mean, like, no. you are against, like, no. I commit the, by the way, I commit the foul all the time. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll be the UFC yeah. fight and yeah. I'm posting while I'm at the fight. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, right, because you want to flex for the gram. I'm yeah. here, I'm here while it's I'm happening. for the gram. Right. Yeah. But uh, not a good idea. No way. I, I, well, I mean, if you've got family back home, if you're like, for me, I'm a gun guy, you know, like if you got anything that people know you have right. um, that you're putting online is it's in that public setting. And if they know you're not home, then they know you're vulnerable. Then it comes down to like, what have you done, done to protect your home and to protect your assets? And or you could be looking at the, um, you know, you could be looking at the ninjas in Paris scenario with uh uh, Kanye and what's what's her name again? Man? Kim. Kim. Yeah. Kim, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Kim Kardashian. Her. Yeah, yeah uh, man. Yeah. Where the song came yeah. true when those ninjas oh. were in Paris. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, and, and they're breaking into your stuff and taking your stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the other thing, not just at home, but, you yeah. know, girls that look like this exactly. are obviously uh, targets, right? They so they are one of the most valuable resources for one of the biggest industries on the planet right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sex trafficking, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Yeah, and yeah. they've got. And by the way, this isn't. I didn't want you to come in here like, oh my god, we're on vacation, John. Like, what the hell? Like, now yeah. you're putting fear into us. But it's just yeah. something, you know. It's I, awareness. Yeah, I'm. I'm I've kind of uh, appointed myself as Uncle John at this point. <laughs> yes, Uncle and John. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's you know, John? so I have access to a guy like Byron. Yeah. So I just, you know, want to make sure you guys are safe out there. And when mm -hmm. you're posting, what's in us? Because you know. When you grow up in a good home, like they have grown up and they're yeah. good people and they're sweet. And nothing's happened. They really, haven't you know? seen <laughs> the level of evil that yeah. is out there. Not, yeah. I know you guys know. I mean, you watch the news and stuff, of course. Mm -hmm. I know you're not living under a rock. But, you know, yeah. I think there's a lot of things that you take for granted. Like, for example, yeah, yeah. you know, I, uh, I told Byron a couple shows ago when he was on, 
I have this habit, or I, I've broken myself of this habit. Yeah. Uh, I love taking like naps in my car. I know that sounds <laughs> crazy. Like, or, you know, like come out of the gym, it's yeah. kind of cold, get in the car, there's a good song on, you know, let me just sit here and chill for a minute. I don't have to, you know, and, uh, you know, like sitting in a, in a car, and he's like, uh, uh-uh. it's like, I it's like a. Fr- of that. No, don't think of it. That's yeah. like, that's like, like, a, like you guys probably get in your car and yeah. then you're rushing. So now you're just going to do the last bit of makeup yeah. in the car and put that like, uh-uh, no that's, more of that, right? It's a free meal for a criminal. <laughs> no, that's like, no. like the lion's like, wonder what, the he, hyena's like, wonder what I'm going to eat. And then there's just like a deer sleeping in front of him. He's like, oh, nice. <laughs> right. That's what that is. Yeah, right. Horrible. Cars are great. Um, they're really good tools for escape. They're also really good tools. We say if it's not moving, it's your coffin. So, so that sitting in your car and like sending that one last text message or whatever, um, it really, you're in an environment where your senses are dampered. You can't really see or hear as well. And then you're not moving. None of it's bulletproof. You don't know there's blind spots. So you want to get your car moving as quickly as possible. There's so many different little tricks they'll use to get you to open your door as well. Um, with like bumping your bumping your 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 uh, your the back of your car or doing something around you to open your vehicle, but like I mean it comes down to really context, you know, understanding where you're at and and what the threat level is there. If you're in a transitional space and you're in between like a safe place like your home or where you work, mm-hmm. and you're in your you're in your car, you're automatically in a transitional space. This is where eighty percent of attacks are going to happen to you. Um, so understanding that context of your environment and cars are always in that environment, tactical positioning. If you're in a vehicle, you probably don't really have it. You probably don't have any advantageous positioning for your environment unless you backed in and you have like visual mastery. But even then, if that car is not like in gear, like if I'm going to sit in my car and have to do something real quick, I'll put it in drive mm-hmm. and then I'll do whatever I need to do. And if someone does anything weird, I can just hit, I can hit drive and I'm gone. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that rolling risk assessment, which comes down to understanding what and who and what people are doing um, in your environment. So those are kind of the three ABCs, but really like what you're talking about, the habits we have. Yeah. And being that you think don't even think about (laughs) as being a a danger to yourself. Right. Right. Which are just organic to like good people just trying to do life and not thinking. So right. Protection centric, I guess. Yeah. Have you guys had either of you had any like like. I don't Weird. want to say close calls, but like, have you been followed out of the yes, mall? Yeah. What, tell, um, you go first. Oh my gosh. Um, this was actually Bentley and I together. Okay. This was, um, oh. in Australia. Yes. We were visiting family and, um, we went to a casino in Melbourne in the mm-hmm. city and obviously we weren't Can't old enough to go there. into the casino. So downstairs there was this very big open mall that was, um, you know, just, it was downstairs and it gave us something to do, but mm-hmm. all the shops were closed. And we also needed to charge our phones. Right. So, so we were just waiting her, on our phone parents. was dead. Right. Yes. So they were just waiting upstairs and then we were just going to go down there, charge the phone, just sit there for a bit. And then, mm-hmm. you know, once they were done, we would come back upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, there was then this man that came downstairs after we did, after we were sitting down and right across from us, there was a, like a little seating area with seats, but we were sitting on the floor against a wall mm-hmm. where the outlet was, where mm-hmm. she was charging her phone. And so then he came over to us and he was at first staring at us for a long time. And she looks at me and she's like, oh, my God, is he still staring at us? And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and it's just the two of you. Yeah, yeah it, it was. was. Just the two of and us. there was nobody else in sight downstairs. And yeah. so he comes down to where we were sitting and just sat next to us. And we both kind of froze and we we're like, oh, my God, like, what Didn't are we supposed right. to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he then proceeds to pull out like I'm not even kidding about ten thousand dollars in cash just right then and there and he was just showing us this money and he was like okay come come with me to the hotel room upstairs upstairs come with me he didn't speak like full English he didn't speak and we were just like Oh we're like, no. no! We it's okay. bolted out of there and sprinted up to the Good. stairs. It's your yes. adrenaline yes. like crazy. Oh my like, gosh! Heart yes. rate. Yeah. He, followed us, he followed us up the escalator, and we were freaking out. We ran. Are up. you wa- running literally? Mm-hmm. Yeah, literally. It was terrifying. Yes, and he's running too. He's running behind. Oh us. wow! Yes. Like so it frantic, awful. like crying, like in shock, like freaking out. And then we found the security guard, and we told him we we're like, and you he, know, this guy. They and, had us um, stand behind them, and the guy finally walked off and. It was just awful. It was really scary. We thought he'd take us and, you know, and we're also in a con- like a different country. Sure. So we have no idea like where we are and what. It sounds doing. like they did everything right, though, in that yeah. scenario, right? Yeah. Yeah. You did the best you could. <laughs> That's uh, you got the heck out of there. You didn't make the cardinal mistake, which is like 
somehow finding a reason to make yourself comfortable with the situation like mm -hmm. well you know he's maybe like a nice mm -mm. you know guy that just <laughs> is like looking to pay for, maybe he's just looking to pay for sex or something but like finding a way to conditionally like make yourself more comfortable people would be like you know someone's breaking into something or doing something horrible or some guy's following a female you know i have five sisters so i've like heard some of these things that they'll come up with i i honestly i tell my wife like you're woman braining this <laughs> like <laughs> trust your instinct yeah. and take action like yeah and she'll be like well he maybe he's a nice guy he just was looking for like you know yeah. and i'll be like no don't worry about no i don't know feelings. i don't want to find yeah. out leave take action tell me but you guys didn't do the whole ignore your instincts thing you guys actually took action ran that was the smartest thing for you to do because the reality is you have to look at like how much would it really take for someone to take like overpower you mm -hmm. it really wouldn't take a lot for a grown man to overpower you especially if he has a plan and he has other men or assets set up on mm -hmm. you it's it's a very when it comes to the female personal protection thing it's uh, so much of it is is foresight and left of bang behavior and you guys have such amazing instincts actually and intuitive reflexes trusting those and taking action early is really where you guys that's the survival mechanism that's built in to women so i try and tell my sisters and they wouldn't believe me that's why i came up with all that real right. world <laughs> right. so i post all that real world combat yeah stuff, so they can know? see i'm like see yeah. you know it's it's that's how you guys wow survive. that's that's scary uh any other incidents like that um followed out of a mall back in dallas or <laughs> creepy guys uh no I, i'd have to think well, if it's not off the top of your head, that's good then. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. that was the that most, was the like, the scariest one, one yeah. I've experienced. Wow. You know, that was just kind of the, like... And then what about, like, I'm assuming uh, you're both on, like, Tinder, Bumble. Are you on those? No. 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 Okay. No. Very good. Because that could be... <laughs> that's a whole other entrapment tool. Super so Trojan amazing. horse dangerous, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right now, so much of the, um, so much of the sex trade is being, like, the abductions are coming from social media mm -hmm. so much of there's a lot of industries that are actually being driven by social media type behavior you know there's a lot of things criminals are doing so like we organically use these different tools to like get social equity and enjoy our lives and like document our lives and like like um, even posting your kids things like that but there are so much victimization happening as a result anytime you're being drawn away to meet another human being um, you are at risk and, you know, even, even, you know, me being who I am, like I'm at risk, you know, uh, someone's, you know, you know, someone's family member is selling something while they're, your wife's selling the couch while you're at work and someone's going to come to the house to buy the couch or go and see, or see one you're going to buy. There's risk there because yeah. you've got to think like the enemy. How would you set up on someone and victimize someone and, and do all these different things? Um, it's those are perfect means perfect modes to do it when yeah. I was little in school like elementary school Maybe mm -hmm. junior high mostly elementary school. They would do yeah. the whole probably you do, went with with it too like uh, Don't go with strangers if strangers yeah. approach you like mm -hmm. do yeah, they yeah, still yeah. do that in school And do they or do they spend any time talking about like sex trafficking or anything like that? I mean in high school. They don't really talk about it, mm -hmm. right? I'm not sure about um you know, elementary school and stuff, but they don't really talk about it at all in high school. Mm -hmm. I'm a senior in high school, and I've gone through it all, and it hasn't, they haven't said one thing about it. Or they probably have, but I just right. don't remember. They don't talk about it enough. Have mm -hmm. any so. of your friends had any problems or close calls like you had in, in Australia that you know of? I'm, I actually, yes. So my best friend, um, I rem I was actually on the FaceTime. I was on FaceTime with her and mm. she went on a walk and she was walking home from Oh, uh, yeah, I, can I don't remember exactly where she was but she was she I think she went to like Walmart or something and then she was walking home and um, She th she started getting followed by this homeless man and he started like <laughs> signaling her He was like come here like and you know telling her to come here and everything and then at first she was like what and like there's this guy that's like telling me to come here and so she just she runs and she kind of like makes another turn mm. and then he starts sprinting behind her and so she starts freaking out and so i'm like oh my gosh she's not answering her phone anymore she hung the phone up and everything so i started panicking so i called her mama i was like yeah. hey um she is sprinting from some homeless guy i'm not really sure what's going on but it you know really freaked me out and things ended up being okay yeah after that um you know she called the police and authorities handled 
the situation. Um, but yeah, that was pretty scary. And I'm <laughs> yeah. sure there was more, but yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, just one that I can think of. So you just so. brought up a, another good point is being buried in your phone in public places, yeah. transitional spaces like you speak of. Yeah. This is, I mean, I'm this age group, forget it. We all do it, right? I mean, I'm the king <laughs> of it. Who am I talking the about? The guy that got hit for his rolly on right. you know, Rodeo Drive. You're texting, drive you're, you know. you're always, you know, making content. Thinking about editing content, yeah. looking at other people's content. Yeah. Um, that's something they that need to be super aware of too, right? Just 100%. being buried in your phone and not present to your surroundings. Yeah. It's hard though, right? It's, I mean, it's, it's a, it is hard. And that's a lot of these things are just little disciplines that will help you live a safer pattern. Like just right. live a safer life. You'll see the guy. You won't think about the. Well, you might be like, thank God I wasn't on my phone just messing around. Um, but you'll see things coming. Uh, and even I'd say going back to the kind of the trafficking thing, like a lot can happen online, but another huge threat is just like the, there's these different types of pimps. Like there's, I did an interview on my podcast with, um, you know, I think she's Vietnamese or Filipino. I think she's Vietnamese and she, you know, she got trafficked and, you know, you look at her and you're like, oh, that probably happened back home, you know, where before you came to America, you know? And she's like, no, she's like, I grew up in Irvine, California. I met a guy when I was in college and then, you know, as it turns out, uh, he had bad intentions and he ended up locking her into an apartment and trafficking her for a really? few Really? Wow. Yeah. And he was a Romeo so, pimp. So he and was like, Irvine yeah. is like eh. upscale tech like, yeah, friendly. Orange County. Uh, yeah. You know, Orange nothing County. bad happens, you know, we think. Right. Um, but yeah. And, and she only made it because the cops just one day were onto him and kicked the door in. Which is like a one in a million doors and one in a million situations. And yeah. she, by the grace of God, got rescued. And um, so there's, there's, this is like such a big industry that touches everyone that people aren't realizing, you know. But yeah, with this, with the cell phone thing, it's, it's everything in life we know to do. Like, how do you lose weight? You eat less, right? How do you, <laughs> how do you, how do you save money? Like, you save your money, you invest it. Like, we know these things. Like, don't sit there and have your face buried in your phone. Um, when you're in public and you're around a bunch of unknown variables and people who you don't know what they're really going to do or their intentions are. It's just that it takes that little bit of discipline, you know, and if I'm going to put my face in my phone, I'm going to do everything I can to stack advantages. My back's going to be up against a wall so I can see or feel everyone coming towards me. I'm going to be like in a safe place, like a bathroom or somewhere where I'm like locked down, or I've got a buddy who's up watching me, you know, and it's just these little things that they sound so like over the top at first, but then when right. they become your habits, they sound awesome. paranoid at first, they right? Sound, yeah. If you, so I guess on that paranoia thing, yeah. I get that from civilians a lot. Like if right. you've been in like combat and places like that, to me, it's not paranoia. Right. I feel safe when I have a plan and a strategy and tools to implement. So like I'm way more comfortable once I've walked into the room, I've grabbed a solid place, I have visual mastery, no more entrances, my exits are, then I can sit down and have a conversation with you and be totally cool. Cause I'm like, competent in that environment until mm -hmm. that happens i'm a little bit like all right let's just get good mm -hmm. is um, that the first thing you do when you go to like a new space or whatever you look and see like if something happens like if the fire a sh uh, you know gunshots mm -hmm. whatever how do i get out of here um the first thing i do <clears throat> yeah the first thing i do when i walk into a room is i look everyone in the eyes and i basically kind of like start to disarm everyone but I'm also assessing everyone. So I'm like kind of engineering a safer environment. So people are casing me. They're like, who's the big black tatted up dude? And I'm like, hey, and I'm being totally nice. <laughs> right? And I'm trying to disarm everybody. I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm nice. Look, I'm nice. Like, totally cool. We're cool. And then people are like cool with it. And most people are cool with it. But I'm looking at people's intentions and trying to get a feel for people. <clears throat> You're basically going, who's the murderer? Yeah, of, exactly. Of, of, amongst like, you. Yeah. Who's okay. the other predator right. in the room? Right? <laughs> right. The but I'm doing it nicely. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, yeah, the next thing is tactical positioning. Like, where do I want to be in this room? Um, and who are my other players? Who are my other players in the room? Where do I want to be in the room? And then what's my plan if something happens in the room? Every single time, 100%. Now, how do they apply that? Because honestly, it's the exact same. It's the exact same thing. It's... I'm nice, but I'm confident. I'm not going to be the one that you're going to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. You know, who are the players in the room? Hey, hey, hey. Well, you, you won't be like, I can enter a room as like one of the players in the room. Uh, with you guys, it's going to be a lot more kind of like, um, I just enter the room. Like, mm -hmm. be an awesome human. Be respectful. Respect goes a long, long way. Even if someone has bad intention and you're respectful to them, that experience can curve their desire to do something negative to you. Mm. Right? So... 
I always, I always am default respectful. And then the next thing is tactical positioning. Where do I want to be in this room? Do I want to be closer to the door? Do I want to be where I can see everything happen? More than likely, I'm armed and I'm a combatant. So I like to be where I can just see everything happen. I don't have to be the closest to the door. Mm -hmm. um, and then what's my plan if something happens? For you guys, who's a, a force multiplier in the room that might help me? Do I have a brother here? Do I have a husband here? Do I have an uncle here? Do I, and then what do I have on my person? Um, and things like that, you know? And then at first, it's like learning to drive. You get in the car, you're like trying to do the stick shift, you're doing all the stuff, and it's like a whole bunch of things to comprehend. Right. Then after a while, right. you walk into a room and you're like, sweet, check, 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 check. Cool, mm -hmm. now let's like play on Instagram. How many, <laughs> you know, like, how many times have you guys been out somewhere and uh, someone approaches your car, they wanna compliment the car, or they wanna ask you for directions, or oh things like that. Happen a lot? It Pretty often. a lot to Pretty me. often. And so what are your thoughts on that? So if they're in their car, because that's a weird thing, right? It's like, yeah. it's almost like telling them, take your normal social graces yeah. off the table, right? right? And be paranoid, or yeah. whatever you wanna call it. There's no reason to be the person that has to solve how you get down to, to the 7-Eleven on the corner of uh, Smith and <laughs> Yeah, it's like Gardner, not, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm kind of a little bit hardcore with this because, you know, I got my five sisters and I've, you know, been had women in my life, you know, my whole life that I care about. And I'm just always like, look, you've got the world's most sought after, most important, powerful uh, natural resource in the universe to mankind between your legs. Okay. That's just the situation. If I was walking around and I had like a briefcase with a billion dollars in it and I was like, hi guys, everyone right. would be like, there's a billion dollars in there. Right. <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's kind of what it's like. It's not like that ex extreme, but right. in some places it is, it is that extreme. Uh, to the person you're talking to that hasn't, you know, that's been like living a hard life and is hunting you, it is that extreme. And so, you know, I think, you know, we don't want to be mean. And we don't want to be like, you know, people that um, aren't able to be proud of the way we treat people, you know, mm -hmm. but I think there's so much to be said for context. Like if I'm in my car right now, you're you have a tactical position of advantage over me and I'm not moving or if I'm in a transitional space, it's just not time for me to try to interact with you long enough for your intentions to become unveiled. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't like. Okay, solid, thank you, I'm gone. You know, I'm respectful, courteous, kind. Right. General Madison, be courteous, be kind. Have a plan to kill everyone you meet, right? <laughs> <laughs> but be courteous, be kind, and keep it moving. Your safety so, is in So if there. they're sitting in their car, yeah. someone walks up, and they're like trying to get their attention, wave yeah. their hand, and hey. hey, roll your window down. Hey. Ignore them? Um, yeah, unless it's someone you know, it's just not worth taking the risk. Unless it's someone that you care Have about. Have you, you done that, safe. though, where you end up engaging with whoever it is? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, right? Because I mean, it's, it's a normal thing to do. And it was one time it happened in a Walmart parking lot. I was sitting. No, not Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> Vanessa's like, not a lot of Walmart. Zombie movies start in Walmart. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> it was right before I even started my car, and he came yeah. up, and he was like, do you know where the closest nature reserve is? And I was like, oh, what? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I was like, that's kind of. I mean, you can you can use your phone. There's Google. There's. Yeah. Right. I don't know why you're bothering me about it. Yeah. But that's and actually. And he was like, "Thank oh. you." And then he asked for my number and stuff, and I was like, yeah. "No, it's okay. It's yeah. okay." And right. Then I just rolled up my window, and then I. Yeah. And like. So in the future, you don't even want don't roll down the window. Like just yeah, there's no reason no, because you can get yourself into a physical altercation. You can't get yourself out of right. like that, and they're right. taking advantage of social like pleasantries and things that you kind of like oh well you're gonna be a nice person you're in a parking lot this is where people get right. actively kidnapped all right, the time right and, 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 and can you just hear him like conspiring like what am i gonna ask this right, girl right nature reserve no. <laughs> and it catches you so off guard right it's like Go yeah, ahead, what, what were you going to say? That just makes it the nature preserve. That just makes it so much scarier Creepier. because there's one right next to the house. There and is. it's huge. It's just completely covered in trees and woods and like just places where in, you know, there's like a um, some like small little rivers and stuff back there. That's just, I didn't even know that. Gosh. Yeah. It, it was, might have been his plan. That, that, right. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> terrifying. Get you back there and, you know. And the sad thing is, you know, you're probably going to disagree with this. Um, <laughs> I would probably lean towards most of the time it is probably innocent and it's probably okay mm -hmm. until it's not. That's exactly. the problem. Right. And that's right. the problem. Like, 
nine times out of ten, nothing's gonna happen. Right. But, but I'm the guy. You don't want to be the ten. <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy to just be like, you just let's cut off all the nine right. times out of ten. Right. Assume there's already been nine. Yeah. Give, <laughs> give your favorite charity a little extra. Assume you're week. the tenth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. someone's gonna get taken today. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And you know, just give to your favorite charity when you get home if you feel bad about just snuffing the guy. <laughs> that's like, her girl. <laughs> you know, like, right. Feel good some other way. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Because these things are happening right now. They're good people that may never see the light of day in closets and cages all over the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm here to try to stop that from happening. Now, growing up in Dallas, I am uh, making a big stereotype assumption. Woo! I'm going to say you've both shot guns before. Actually, yes. I, we have. I, we yes. have. Yes, it Wait. was when we were younger. How do you not remember whether you shot a gun or not, <laughs> Emerson? Because I don't think I actually have shot. It's no? been when we were younger. I've yeah. shot a BB like gun super. for sure, but not like an actual. I've shot a real gun. Just, yeah, no, just I have. Say yes I and haven't. don't ruin my. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, do you? Uh, is that something that you would want to do? You know, to like guns? learn learn how to really use oh. them properly and. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean you're protection. not afraid of them, I guess, is the question. No. Okay. I mean, obviously, I, you know, you, everyone would be afraid of guns, but at the same time, if you need them for protection, you have to be okay yeah. with them. And so I'd be okay with carrying one just for protection. Yeah. Then, yeah. You know. Does mom mom have a gun? No. You know? no, no, actually. Is she no. anti-gun? Do you know? She's Probably not. She's no. pretty medium. You know, she yeah. sees both sides. And mm -hmm. I think that's how our whole family is. Mm -hmm. You know, we see both sides. We can see why some people are afraid and why yeah. some people right. want to use them. Yeah. So it, it's just medium. So, What's the youngest uh, <laughs> you've seen people learn? Like, when, when is the, like, an introduction to firearms? Le well, young? So I would say <clears throat> introduction to firearms young as you can get them to be really? competent and understand them and be respectful of the weapon. Mm -hmm. um, but I know legally, you know, it, the states vary, but roughly 18 to 21 all over the United States where mm -hmm. you can get your stuff. Right. But, I mean, I would say in terms of protection, the firearm is your number one equalizer. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I wish women were the number one concealed carry people yeah. on the planet. Like, they so should be. Yeah. Um, because you're going to need that equalizer. Even even blades, I mean, have been protecting women since the beginning. Because yeah. men want to pull you close and dominate you. If you have a knife, you have you have the element of surprise. Yeah, and you can get stuff done. You know? Right. So, but you don't want to. And be it that level close. sets the size <clears throat> advantage in most cases, right? I mean, yeah. It's, it's, and yeah. and even legally, you have disparity of force. Your attacker's yeah. 50, 60 pounds heavier than you. You're in fear for your life. And you can get to work, but. Yeah, I would. I, I wish more females, you know, were really, really into carrying a firearm. And I will say, with training, it's very important that they have a positive experience with that in the very beginning. So you have to have a competent trainer. Um, but once you do begin training and understanding firearms, like you walk different, you move different. When you understand like how to protect yourself, your whole vibe is different, and that one thing will get you. Um, off the target selection process of mo uh, many predators because they're looking for people that they think are easier targets. And when you're walking around like, no, actually, I'm a predator as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like they, yeah. it's an energy. It's a, it's you'll look someone who you used to just be intimidated and like not look yeah. at them. You will look them in the eyes like, do I have to shoot this guy right now? Like, do am I yeah. gonna have to do something right now? Right. And he's gonna see that you can do something, and that stuff actually changes things really right. quickly. Okay, now I have a question for each of you. I'll start with you, Bentley. What's up? <laughs> when is the last time you went to an ATM machine at night? Oh. I don't really go at night. Okay. Good. I go during the day. Just Bentley's a G. What's <laughs> up? Emerson? I actually went with Bentley. Uh, <laughs> at night? Yes. yes. <laughs> at night? Wait a minute. No, what? Almost. <laughs> when they, uh, Mom, she called us and she was like, oh, no. are you guys coming? Uh, we went to, to, to uh, Chase that one night. I, I, it was like I recent. Remember. It was recent. I can't remember what we were doing before. Don't tell her where you were. But I think you were depositing. You were, okay, you were depositing cash. <laughs> oh my God. From, from uh, <laughs> one of our cleaning jobs. Cleaning job. Yeah, it, right? it was something. Jackpot. At night? Yeah, it well, was at night. Typically, I go in during the day. Okay. I just but that one time was time. at night. <laughs> okay. It was at night. So we're going to yes. stop that. So good. <laughs> All right. I want a verbally <laughs> binding agreement from both of you. There's no more ATM machines at night. Yes, sir. Daytime right, okay, right. Byron? Daytime's better. Yeah, daytime's better. way better. Go inside, have people around. And 
would you rather they walk up to the M machine, uh, ATM machine or do the drive through ATM machine? But because what's the rule on that? Because the car is no good, right? Well, I mean, if you're in your car and you actively can put your foot on the gas and get out of there, I'd say the car is fine. I do. Okay. Yeah, that's but what we do. Drive through okay. in the car. You know, don't put it in park and just do your work, and then you yeah. know you can roll out of there if something weird happens. But I would prefer. Oh, that's go. interesting. So don't put the car in park when you're in the. Right. Nah, Be ready yeah. to roll. One hundred percent. Because that's do so you, rolling in there, doing that action. So yeah. We're talking context. Okay, I'm gonna. I have a bunch of money. People know I'm gonna have a bunch of money. Yeah. I'm being in a place where everybody knows I have a bunch of money. So you're being channelized. You're in a bottleneck, and so you know that is a elevated risk. Right yeah. there, going to that place, being in that line right there. So I would stay ready in that line. But I don't I go ask inside. this judgmentally. I really don't. I'm just curious. Like, is okay. any of this stuff stuff you guys think about or have thought about? Yes. Yeah, it is? I oh, good. think about it all um, the time. Even our mom talks to us about good. it all right. the time just because, you know, how people can be. Yeah. You know, men and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, we do. We do think about like going to Walmart at night or going out to the grocery store. I think about that myself because usually I'm the one who drives by myself. Yeah. And so I typically go to places during the day. I'm too afraid to go at night because I have been followed out of Walmart. I've been followed right out of different places. Okay. And so so it's you've been, had those oh yes. shit moments. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's something that I've changed as I got I've, as I've gotten older and started driving and stuff. It's been, mm -hmm. you know. It's something that I do during the day rather than nighttime, right. where people can actually like come up, sneak up to you. It's sure. Not, there's no one around, and someone could come and grab you and, you know, yeah, take mm -hmm. you somewhere. Yeah, we've all seen the movie, right? Yeah. Taken. We've all seen oh, it. I yeah. think so. actually I have seen <laughs> yeah. that movie. Yeah. I have. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a specific set of skills. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So good. <laughs> yeah. Especially in Texas, you guys can get armed. Easy, mm -hmm. more easily once you're of age, I'm sure. 18. Yeah. yeah. The there you go. Oh, All right. That's awesome. <laughs> Lock yeah. and load. You know? <laughs> yeah. Are you ever in Texas? Do you do any teachings out there ever? Or? We were talking about maybe doing a symposium in Texas this year, um, but I don't have anything on the schedule just right. yet. But I got some things maybe in Arizona, nearby. These two could probably put it together. Valley. I mean, they, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And we're also looking at doing just like some female stuff, like some stuff for women as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can talk about that. Yeah. Right? Awesome. That's, that's yeah. really part of the passion that caught me to really start putting all this together, to be honest. Because of your sisters. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, don't do that. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, you're the security yeah. guy. You're my brother. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know what? I tell their mom all the time. I tell Karami is yeah. her name. I'm always like, it must be a nightmare. Like, I don't mean that like... <laughs> Who like? Yeah, it's nothing but know. worry, right? It's <laughs> worry, no matter what. When it's kids, when it's kids that look like this, yeah, it's like, yeah, oh my god, give yeah. me a break. I mean, uh, even walking just, around out in the world, right? You know? <laughs> and you're just like, right? Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Man. yeah, yeah. It was funny. I was shocked as she texted me. I said, um. Or she texted me today. She was like, hey, they're on their way over. And I was like, alone? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, what? Is that a, yeah, a protection detail on yeah. them 24-7? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was, man. I can only imagine. Mm-hmm. Just in so. the, out in the wild, yeah. you know, no, and that's roaming around. And that's, you know, I, this, that's kind of one of the biggest pieces is just this education. And yeah. I see the tragedy of it is a lot of people don't take it seriously until something happens to them. And then they're like in our classes and they're like all about it. And I just, I just hope more people can be like, you know what? I buy a car insurance. I teach myself how to do these things. It helps me have a better life. Yeah. I'm going to spend a little bit of time, a little bit of focus, and I'm just going to learn how to not be an easy target. Yeah. You know, especially if you don't have the leeway. If you're like a 240 pound dude, you kind of have some latitude. Like you could accidentally knock someone out with an offhanded. You know, right, you, right. Like no one's, <laughs> no one's actively hunting you because they make millions of dollars off of people like you every day. Right. You know, um, but. You know, I just I want more people to be like, you know what? Let me just take a few classes and let me just learn how to use some some tools. Let me just put some things around my house and my structure that are just gonna make it harder for someone to victimize me. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. I believe more people do that. We have a safer. What are your form. thoughts on girls like this carrying pepper spray? Good idea, bad idea. I think it's a joke. Like, mo like, like I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> like, you, like, and by the way, do you have pepper spray? Actually, I was actually thinking no. about getting it. Okay, recently. tell tell us why no pepper spray. Um, I mean, criminal like the qual. I think the quality of humans is just getting kind of like worse, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so like criminals are even getting. 
getting more pathetic. Like I've, and I've seen just some stuff in the videos I get sent, and I'm just like embarrassed for the criminal. But a realistically, a very determined enemy, a determined adversary, a determined male is going to be able to, able to overpower that. Every single male that goes through police. Uh, training every single male that goes into the military all of them learn how to deal with so it's right. like a false sense of security oh, oh I've got yeah. pepper spray I've got pepper spray <laughs> or right. even buying a gun and not getting training that is a false right. sense of security mm -hmm. people like that are, you're carrying a gun for me or someone like me if, if I need it you know like right. oh. or you pull that gun out you're carrying it for yeah you gotta think you're criminals right now they're out there selling drugs fighting each other getting their stripes they're living like a hard life right now, right? right. So, and we're just like chilling in this like air conditioned room, having a conversation, <laughs> like going to work and stuff. So you really want to be able to have something when you bring it to bear, it gets the job done. And pepper spray is just not that. Taser, eh? Mm, it's taser. better. Taser. It's better. Yeah. I was but you're still gonna that. get close, right? You, gotta get, right. you don't want to get close. Dangerously close. You gotta. You gotta learn to use it like if you do get a taser and you get one that shoots which i would highly recommend you got to practice with it you know so you know what the drop rate is when you actually shoot your thing mm -hmm. and all those different things but i still would say get a gun <laughs> yeah you're especially you know there's some advantages to being a female with regards to that as well you have you know more than likely average male is 180 pounds you're gonna have a disparity of force there. i can already uh hear later on when, once this goes up uh yeah. i'm gonna get a phone call you're telling them to get guns what are you doing byron john point. orlando <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> who'd you have them Who's around this byron guy yeah right <laughs> yeah do you guys have any questions for byron oh okay actually yes yeah. i do what would you say makes somebody an easy target as uh, a woman. Good question. Yeah. What would you consider an easy target as a woman for somebody so, to, you know, take or something? Yeah. So organically, women are easier targets than men, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I would say they have more to offer based mm -hmm. on the way the market works when it comes to um, human trafficking. So there's these things that make them more already a more attractive right. target. But really, if I was going to say one or two traits, I'd say mindset and awareness the, mm -hmm. oh, okay. the awareness piece is And it's huge. obvious to spot when they're not aware. It's extremely mm -hmm. obvious. Right. Like Buried in the phone. Yeah. Looking and, down. Yeah. And oblivious. Like, men are naturally hunters. Like the masculine imperative is like, I hunt food and then I need to like further my gene pool. So like every man is designed naturally to be like, doo -doo -doo, oh, gene pool. Doo -doo -doo, oh, uh, food, <laughs> yeah. work. Like we're designed to hunt. So... Um, and females are, have a little bit of a different awareness, you know, so right. this whole like raising your eyes up awareness thing is huge when it comes to that's mm -hmm. really what helps mm -hmm. females. Uh, I can't makes them a tell better you, yeah. I don't mean to cut you off. Mm. I can't tell you how, when I, we had lunch yesterday, we yeah. had lunch over at Encore. Yeah. So I walked through the casino on the way to the restaurant. So I walked by four or five blackjack tables, roulette yeah. wheels, whatever. I can't tell you how many women I saw playing blackjack, leaning forward in a seat with their purse behind yeah, them yeah there's yeah, yeah in las vegas and some of the persons were open like i almost stopped and told one like what are you doing but like, i did not yeah, yeah. I, what are you doing yeah. like, what are you doing no yeah that awareness piece and then mindset you guys you do have um those instincts but mm -hmm. i just have heard so many if you read a book just two seconds um, by, um, brr, what's my guy? I mean, just two seconds by, it's one of the biggest security companies. I'll, it'll come back to me. Yep. Anyways, the, someone called that a senior moment, just so you know. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> well, saying you're having I got one some, earlier. Some yep. TBI. It's all good. Blown okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but, uh, forgot you've been blown up. He's been blown up. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's just, yeah. let's just leave it at that. Oh, you know, has, yeah. So literally God. Iraq. Wow. Yeah. Good times. In Iraq. Yeah. But oh, what you yeah. do with that information is huge. You know? So if you think something's off, just treat it like it's off put yourself in a safer place don't freak out just be like okay cool like you're not gonna stand right behind me i'm gonna just go back to my car and or i'm just gonna not get on the elevator with you and cool like i'm gonna yeah. you know and what you do with that oh, information i'm glad huge. you just brought that up yeah. uh how many times have you gotten onto an elevator with when you're by yourself and you've gotten on with uh <laughs> either a, one guy by himself or a couple of guys multiple guys that you don't know has that ever it ever felt occurred? weird in the elevator? It may have occurred. You don't even realize it that it occurred. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe, but right. I've Not never that I've, like. I can't really individually pick out one time yeah. where I've been completely alone with just random people. I've usually been. Or like, like at the hotel, family. like right now, like if you if you guys are down, you know, let's say your mom goes upstairs first, 
Well, you're you're not 21 though, so you're not really in the casino without her. Well, right? yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. yesterday <laughs> this is not really a, an elevator story, but yeah. yesterday Emerson and I were sitting down, and um, it was after that show that we watched yep. yesterday. That one. Oh. And oh, there's the like, mail like, review yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, right. Thunder <laughs> from down yes. under. That one. Yes. That yes. Show. And okay. um, oh, they have like this. <laughs> they have this bar that um, you go out to, and like everyone just like partying after or something, yep. and so. Um, we gonna, were not the bar, by no, the way. No, just, no, just no. making yeah. it clear. We were just sitting there, <laughs> just hanging out, and um, my mom was out there getting a drink. And so we're waiting on her, and we were sitting down, and this man had came up. We're alone at this time, and yep. um, we're talking and whatever, and then he came up to us and was, like, trying to talk to us, and yeah. we he was on something or something, and he was like, oh, do you know what this bar is about? Um, this is the only bar in the casino. Just being real, like, just... Why are you talking hunting. to us? Like, yeah. <laughs> like hunting, <laughs> hunting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then my mom, she saw and she ran up behind him and was like, "Hi!" And he yeah. got real I'm intimidated. Yeah, yeah, I'm their mom. <laughs> right. And got real intimidated and finally walked away. But it was yeah. just like, if she wasn't there, who knows what have right? We've obviously would have, you know. Yeah, like, and at least you're in a big public, public setting. Right, so. right, right. It's just, you know. Yeah. Ugh. I you think know. there's That's just weird, yeah, yeah, there's just something to be said for getting kind of used to that and understanding that it's part of your human experience and then mm -hmm. how you can deal with it most effectively and with conf with confidence and competence, you know. Mm -hmm. It's okay, cool. In this context, this guy's talking to me, maybe he just wants my number. Do I feel safe right now here to have this conversation? Um, do I have a plan if this does get weird? Hmm, maybe this plan's not strong enough. Maybe it's time I just exit this conversation. Like thinking kind of of those things while you're in those situations rather than just like kind of just talking with like being right there with him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like your awareness is much more broad and mm -hmm. it can save your life. Right. Uh, we're almost out of time because I know you got to head to the airport before mm -hmm. we go. <clears throat> uh, unrelated to all this, five years from now, you're doing what? <laughs> Or what do you want to be doing five years from now? I want to try to be, number one, the best person I possibly can be. Wow, and number two, uh, work on my craft, expand my network, and um, do the things that I want to do. So, Which is? Um, I really, really <laughs> want to do acting, which mm -hmm. is something you know I've always wanted to do growing up, just because yep. I love it. So yep. that's something that I want to be doing. How about you, now. Bentley? Um, Five years from now, yeah. I'll be in my 20s. Yep. Um, I'm <laughs> <be> 23. <laughs> At 23, what's Bentley doing? Um, I'm wanting, obviously, to be successful, a good person. Um, I'm wanting to be big in modeling. Mm -hmm. I want to start, you know, expanding my network, as she said. Um, you know, just being successful, stuff like that, like I said. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Nursing. That's what I was going to say. Nursing school. I really? want to be in nursing. Yes. I want to be a nurse, hopefully work my way up to a nurse practitioner. Okay. So, yeah. I like it. Yes. Byron, what are you doing in five years? <laughs> <laughs> the same thing I'm doing every day. Kicking <laughs> ass and taking names. Take over the world, I bro. Like you it. know? Yeah. Well, um, listen, thank you. This was kind of an impromptu thing. I hit all of you up yesterday. Uh, well, actually, I hit your mom up yesterday and, uh, and you. And thanks yes. for coming in and being a Worked. part of the 24-hour show. The whole mm. point of this for me is so I could uh, – I'm eating – while they're watching this, I'm actually eating pizza somewhere in this building wow. uh, a week from now. So, so you like are on here for 24 straight hours. hours. Me and Adam Lieberman. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You've met Adam yet. What do you guys do? <laughs> I got to check this out. That yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Maybe you can um, zoom in yeah. for, for 15, 20 minutes. How at me, yeah, man. I'm sure great. in 24 hours I got a few. Yeah, something. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks for coming so in. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for you having so us. Thank yeah. you. It's good times. Yeah, it's an honor. Thanks for talking, y'all. Yes, it was yeah. so nice Great to meet you. So nice you guys should you. follow Byron on yes. Instagram yes, because absolutely. His, absolutely. it's really informative absolutely. stuff and uh, it's important for you to, to know. Yeah. Sure, okay. my friends, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank well, you. They, other ladies yeah. are friends. Other girls, they need yes. that, too. Yes. They do. All right, George, we're done. I don't know how you end this piece, but that's how you do it. Woo!